Hello, ladies and germs. This is Alper Markoff with Concepts and Legends, and today's interview is with MTG artist Christopher Muller. But before we get to the interview, I want to remind everybody to stick around at the end of the video for our weekly giveaway. And now, let's get to the interview. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm just moving my screen to get into the full view. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's a cool background. I like it. I Yeah, no, the artist uh, is apparently... Uh, doing interviews today so <laughs> yes um actually speaking of just a, right off the start i want to ask um how did you first get involved with magic so i was the comic book artist originally mm -hmm. and um i was working i would go to san diego comic-con every year mm -hmm. um and i set up there and one of the brahm you know brahm you know the artist brahm he's done I, magic art bunch of D D art Yes. Anyway, he, he, he had lived in Pittsburgh. It's where I'm from, Pittsburgh, uh, for a couple of years anyway. And we got to be uh, friends. And he brought Ron Spears over to my table where I was signing comic stuff. And um, he said, looks good. I'd like to work with you. And so then I started working with Magic and basically went from forever after, you know. <laughs> what, I mean, wow. I mean, what was your first actual first um, MTG card that you did? It was called Expunge. It was from Urza's Saga. Ah. And I did three cards in that set, Expunge, Shower of Sparks, and Hidden Gorillas. But the first one I actually painted was Expunge, yeah. What would you say as far as the evolution of artists and art has gone at Wizards of the Coast, what would you describe the evolution of that? It's like from yeah, somebody who yeah, speak from the beginning. Question. Yeah, it's a good question. Well, I really wasn't there from the beginning. I, I didn't start until Urza Saga, which was 90, what, 98 or something like that, I think. Um, but early enough that there was, there yeah, was. Early enough. early enough, yeah. I've gone, I've seen a couple waves of, so the very early stuff was, you know, Wizards was a small company that hadn't really, Magic hadn't taken off yet. And so they were kind of getting artists wherever they could get artists. Um, so it was a very eclectic mix. Um, then as the, as the game sort of um, became more popular, they had more money, they started to um, work with, they started to sort of uh, dis develop a style, like a house style or a house mm -hmm. look. And it, and, it, and it primarily was, so they, what they did was they, they were moving away from anything that had like ink, pen and ink work in it and anything that was sort of watercolory. This is all just my perception. This isn't, I would, nobody told me this. This is just me looking at it. Um, so all that kind of stuff kind of fell away and they, they started to go more with more of what I call opaque mediums like acrylics and oil paint. And that was, and that was right around, that was, so that was when I started. So it worked for me because I was working on acrylics. Mm -hmm. um, and people like Brothers Hildebrandt and Greg Staples and Kev Walker and all those guys um, basically were kind of comic book illustrators at the time. Kev Walker was doing comics, Greg Staples was doing comics, um, the Hildebrandts were doing comics and, and book covers and things. So that's where they, they started drawing from that community and the kind, that kind of look. Um, so that worked for me because I was kind of just starting out in that community and my work kind of was fitting into that. That's what I was looking at. So that kind of went along for a while. Then basically the other, the next big shift was when digital came in. And that was, I don't know when, so that was early 2000s, I guess. I don't, I don't actually know. I wasn't really paying that much attention. Right. It started to come in and, and there was more, more and more digital work. And at this point it's about 90% of it is digital. So yeah, the, yeah. The I actually. Came, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I actually just talked to an artist, uh, Kieran Yanner. He did his first oil painting ever for the Zendikar Rising set. They, mm -hmm. uh, the artists have been daring each other to do one oil painting because of that like reason that it is so digital. Yeah, well, the, so what's funny is, is that when I was working and a set would come out, like a 300 something card set would come out, 300 oil paintings or acrylic paintings would hit the market. So. You could get you could get art for two hundred bucks, four hundred bucks for a piece of art. Now it's like you're seeing ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and the reason for that is because there's maybe five paintings coming out of a three hundred card set. 
So if you're a digital artist, if I were a digital artist and I'm working now, I would as quickly as possible learn how to paint because that's where all the money is. You get $1,500 for a card from Wizards and then you can turn around and sell it for 10,000. You're losing a lot of money if you're working digitally. That's just my, that's my impression. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the other reason I think a lot of people are trying to start to do actual paintings. I would imagine, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a lot of money in the, in selling the originals. I would imagine though that the pieces that you, you, you know, the earlier the pieces have gone as well, you guys would be able to, to get uh, good money for that too, just because the fact that they're so historical. Yeah, except that they're, they've, I've sold them all. Ah, okay, I got you. I mean, that's how, it, literally that was about 50% of my income was selling originals. But I was selling them for 200 to 400 600 dollars. So if the guys who didn't sell, and there are some like, um, uh, I can't remember who I was talking to, but anyway, there are, uh, uh, Jeff Laubenstein held on to a lot of his art. He just didn't sell it for whatever reason. I guess he had, he didn't need the money. So now he just, you know, he, he can sell those pieces for lots of money. So good for him. Um, you officially, re you retired in what was 2017 from doing MTG art, correct? Anyway, whatever, or maybe it's 2017. You probably know uh, better than me. Yeah, it froze up for a second there. Did you, I don't know if I uh, caught you, so I'll re-ask the question. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> um, go ahead. Did you, uh, I believe you retired in, in uh, 2017 from doing MTG art, correct? Right, right. I think it was 20, I, I thought it was 2019. I thought it was last year. I mean, I, like I thought that, the, well, I had been, res I was reading on Reddit, uh, the Walk the Plank artwork, they had referred to it as your last right. piece, and that was 2017. Right. Okay, what so was, that's wow, that's then time flies, I guess. Right, I know. <laughs> um, that painting, was that you on the plank? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it looks a lot like me. It does. But, yeah, it's funny. Like, a lot of people are asking me that question, and, you know, I mean, I just say, well, it does look like me. You know what I mean? It's so sad. It's such a sad note. Right. To... But I, that's the thing. I don't feel sad about leaving magic. So I'm not, I'm just going to leave that, that up in the air. You know what I mean? I know. I got you. I mean, you have uh, a lot going on as far as your other like um, mediums, which we'll go into then the things, the projects that you're doing, which um, I guess I'll just jump to it. Like, what are you working on now in your retirement, quote unquote, from magic, but not necessarily retired, retired? Well, I'm, I'm sort of retired, retired. So what I'm doing primarily now is I'm designing board games. So right. I've, I've, I've already, I have one of them in print. Well, it's actually, that's a card game called uh, Napoleon's Eagles. So there's mo I have a real interest in historical games. So um, I have that, that game, Napoleon's Eagles. I did a sequel to that, which is in publication called um, The Hundred Days, which is another Napoleonic card game. So it's the same series. Uh, these are all from Compass Games is, is the company. And then I'm working on a Civil War game right now um, called Brothers at War um, that I'm trying to get out the door now. And the thing for me that's fun about them is I'm designing the games, but I'm also doing all the art and the design and the box art and all that kind of stuff. It's super fun. Do you think now with the uh, reprints that you've actually been reprinted now, you were in, uh, your cards were in Jumpstart and your, uh, one of your cards, Master Thief, is the commander in the newest set. Cool. Um, is there any chance that maybe you could come back for a one-off? I, I know yeah, you left definitely. on good terms. Yeah, well, I, left, I left the door open for, for one-offs at, at any point, so absolutely. I, I have to say on the behalf of the fans, I mean, I've gone onto the boards, I've talked to people and people really love you and were really sad when you retired. There I was... appreciate that. Yeah, every, everyone was, has been really very gracious and I still do shows. So I still go out to events, not during the COVID, but right. I go out to events and, um, and I see fans all the time and chat with them. And I'm gonna still be very connected to the community. Um, I'm just not doing. I'm just not doing regular artwork. But that I will absolutely do pieces here and there if I'm asked. So yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, I mean, I think you should just because you're an elder statesman. You could just go in there and be like, "Hey, I want to do a one-off." And like, I can't imagine them saying no because there was such reverence for you on the page when they brought you back for jump starts. So you're. Uh, oh nice. It's, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. So that's definitely I, the vibe on the street. So I, I mean, I you know, I yeah. would I would consider it. But, well, it's funny. So I, I, you know, I have painted since I started my first, my first work was in 1990. 
So that's like over 30 years now I've been doing painting and I'm just ready for another thing. So it's, it's funny. It's like, it's not, it's nothing like, I mean, I still play magic. I still enjoy magic. Um, it really is just, you know, spending my time sitting down doing a painting. Is that what I want to do? Or do I want to, because I don't have so many hours in the day. What do I want to do? So yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's really just a matter of, you know, when the, when the muse calls, I'll, I'll, I'll jump for it right now and sort of do another stuff. That's all. So. Speaking of the muse, um, I wanted to know uh, the more about the Tori Amos painting because I'm a huge fan as well. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, those were, uh, I did a series of those. That was back, oh God, I don't remember when that was, but, but so Tori Amos did a series of calendars for rain, the rape and incest. Uh, National Network. Network. Yeah, National Network. Um, and so she had uh, a bunch of comic book illustrators primarily uh, commissioned to do pieces for that calendar. So I did, I did, I did several of them over the years, I think three, three, three different years. Were you in comic book tattoo as well? Sorry? Uh, the book, uh, there's a book called comic book tattoo. I, I don't know. I did not participate in that one, yeah. Okay, that's, that's awesome. Uh, so you were commissioned to do that. Yeah. yeah. That's great, that's yeah. great. She's, yeah. a, she's a cool lady. Yeah, yeah, they were super fun. I actually got, she wrote me back a little note on one of them saying, cause I, I, it, one of them was a picture of her playing the piano in this like back room and there's a cat kind of walking toward her. And I don't know if she has a cat or not, but she wrote a little note saying, thanks for the cat. <laughs> it's cool. So I have, a little awesome. post, I have a little post-it note that I, you know, that says thanks for the cat on it on my copy of that calendar. Yeah. What uh, I'm going to say, like, if you could name one piece of artwork from Magic the Gathering or otherwise, if you can't pick one from Magic, that represents you as an artist. Interesting. Uh, well, I'm looking right at Lightning Bolt, which is pretty, pretty. Uh, it's it's iconic. Special. It's hard for me to get that one out of my head just because I'm staring at it. So <laughs> let's, just, let's, just, let's use that one because it has certain elements that I think uh, are important to me when I'm doing magic cards. The first one is um, I think about, again, I'm a gamer. I like games and I like, and, and as, a, um, as an illustrator, what you're doing is you're solving graphic problems. And so when you're doing a magic card, the graphic problems are when somebody pulls a card out of their deck, you want them to know the color. So you want to emphasize the color. You want to emphasize what, what the card is and what it does. And then you also want to kind of create the, the, the feeling of the set, whatever that set is. Mm -hmm. uh, if, the, if there's a, like some of the, the early sets didn't so much have world building but the but the more recent ones really very strongly have a, a a plane that the painting is on and so you want to evoke that so lightning bolt was obviously not tied to any one plane it was a, a more sort of general card so you didn't want to be so specific with it that you're like oh look zendikar or oh look Kamigawa. right okay. yeah it could it could be on any plane really it could be on any plane it's it's more like just any any mage could cast a lightning bolt anywhere it's not a plain specific kind of thing. So uh, I didn't want to have any of that. So, so my wizard, the little wizard that I have in there is very kind of, could be anywhere wizard, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, the color is very red. So that, so the, the decision to do a red lightning bolt, which is obviously not the color of lightning bolts, uh, was because it is, it's an iconic red card. And when somebody pulls it out of their deck, I want them to go, oh, red. They immediately know what's, what that color, what the color identification of that card is. Um, and then the, the, the focus is not the person casting the, the spell. It's the spell itself. So I wanted, to have, I wanted to have the idea that this wasn't just a nature lightning bolt, that there's a wizard creating it. Mm -hmm. so I got that's, you. That's kind of a comic book storytelling thing. I wanted to to tell the story that this is a lightning bolt that's being called down by somebody. So I stick a, suck a little figure in there. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so that's really, that's really kind of the idea is, you know, for, for me, it's emphasizing the bolt because the character is very small. So you don't have like a large character doing this and there's a lightning bolt coming down. 
it's a tiny little character over here and the lightning bolt is sort of the star of the thing you know right right you almost have to like pay attention to see that there's somebody right. casting see it somebody even there yeah um if since you do play magic i i always like to ask this question to anyone who does um i would say what is your most blinged out magic card that you own the fanciest one well i do my own altars for my own favorite cards <laughs> i don't i don't alter i don't alter other people's art for other people i only do altars on my own work but okay for myself and for my deck i will alter anything so um and actually i also do it for my like my brother you know whatever so all of our decks all of our commander decks obviously have a soul ring right because you have mm. and so all of them now i have whoever the commander is i've painted the commander basically holding or casting or summoning the soul ring so in the well, background of the soul ring is the commander of that deck whoever it is you oh do you have one on hand that you could show us uh, that sounds uh, so cool how will i'll email it to you after how's that okay awesome Later. and i could i could put it into the uh into the the uh, background um yeah. that's great um yeah. so that's 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 a sort of a form of how i i do blink then we have did another really fun one and again this was for my brother for a gift he did an ape deck again a commander deck right uh, but the theme was all an ape tribal deck uh and so he had things in there like chameleon colossus who isn't an ape but is an ape. So I basically altered all the cards in there that were not apes into apes, including his commander, who was, I think, Xenagos, is that his name? He's a god? Yes, he is. Right, the satyr god? Mm -hmm. So yep. the satyr god is now an ape, like throwing trees in the air and all this kind of stuff, <laughs> giant ape, like King Kong. And then, and then uh, I did a bunch of other altars, so now his ape deck is very aped out, that kind of thing. Do you alter for people, if people were to request or to like uh, commission it, would that be something you would do? Yeah, I do alters. I do alters quite regularly. Again, only on my cards or on my artist proofs. Um, I have a guy who basically handles all that for me. Um, Kurt Rush, he, he will field, field it all and he's very helpful and he helps. For, and then I just have to paint him. So it, it, that works out really well. And then I do them at shows too, so. What commander do you use? Who's your favorite commander? Uh, Azuri. Azuri. That was, my, that was my first big, I'm a green player. I like green. And he's really, he was my first, and I like elves. So I have an elf tribal deck with Azuri. Is it Azuri before the tragedy or after? I don't even know about the tragedy, see? Well, he got, uh, I believe he got Frexy and he got completed. Oh yeah, uh, that. No, no, I have, this is the early, this is while he's still a, 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 a rebel. A, Oh yeah, so that's this that 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 particular story set just uh oh, that's Night of the Living Dead nihilistic. So sad. All yeah. these people are just like there's this genocide, then they turn them against their own people. I'm like, uh, it's dark, wizards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I won't be keeping you much longer. Final question would be, um, do you have anything upcoming that you would like to talk about? Anything that, that you could keep us aware on? Yeah, really just, I would say, like, if uh, if folks go look for Napoleon's Eagles, if you're interested in seeing what my card games are like, that's coming out. Um, or that's been out. There's going to be another one coming up. Um, I am going to, the, the next game in the in the queue after the Civil War game is a fantasy game. Um, again, this is going to be a big whole map war game. And all, I'm doing, I'm hand, hand drawing all the, all the counter art, the playing pieces and I'm going to hand draw the whole map. It's this huge map, continent map. So that's yeah. Gonna be super fun. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's what I've been working on. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of work. I mean, for, it's, it's for somebody who's retired. <laughs> it's a ton of work, but I, I really love it. So, you know, it's all, you know, I, I did, I did 500 page painted comic books back in the day. So I'm used to doing these really big projects that take years to finish. So do you I, just not sleep or? Oh, I sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it just, it just, take, you know, like, it's funny, these, these, these jobs that just take a really long time. You sort of like, I remember when I was working on um, my first big comic, you know, because I write them too. So first I'm working on the script. And so I have my like script writer's hat on. So I'm every day I kind of go out on the porch if the weather's nice and I'm like working on my script and getting that together. And then once that's done, then I start doing laying out the pages and I have these little thumbnail drawings and I'm like figuring out how the story that taking the script and how that's going to go visually. And then I'm starting to develop the world. So 
visually. So I have sketchbooks that are full of like, this is what the spaceships look like. This is what the weapons look like. You know, basically the same kind of stuff that Wizards does. And then I go to painting. So now I'm painting every page, you know, blah, 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 blah. So these things just took forever, but they were awesome. Great. Yeah, it sounds, yeah. it sounds like it. Well, um, thank you so much for your time today. And yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely send me those pictures of those cards you altered because those sound really awesome. I, I, I think everybody would love to see them. Sounds great. Yeah, I'll send you, send you a bunch of my altars. You can paw through them. Show them off. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good day. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Great chatting with you. You too. See you later. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the interview. And now I'm going to reveal this week's winner. The winner for this week's giveaway is, and I hope I say this correctly, um, Boptimus Prime, that is his name. I got it right. And Boptimus, you are now the proud owner of a Zendikar Rising promo Lotus Cobra, fancy pants. So I'll be mailing that out to you. And I want to remind everybody that with each video we do, I will be doing a giveaway with a fancy card. So all you have to do to get that is like and subscribe. And if you get two friends to do the same, that puts you in for double. So there's some incentive for you to watch this channel. And thank you very much for staying with me. And until then, I got a scoop.